Hi, this is Jim Brisson. I'm here today to talk to you about the Mikado method. And um, this is a little different because this is a method that is a solution for a number of different problems. It could be applied uh, to several types of problems like dependencies or spikes or refactoring or TDD. Um, that's what I have on the list there. So you need to understand how to do the Mikado method before you understand what I'm talking about. So let's dive right into that. The Mikado game um, has a Japanese sound and name. Apparently it, it originated in Europe and wanted to sound more exotic or something. It's like pickup sticks, right? You got a pile of sticks and there are some sticks that are worth more points than others. An emperor stick um, has a lot of points. So to solve the game, a theoretical solution might involve picking up the emperor stick to see what sticks are laying on top of that stick. And then, um, you know, serially, you could pick up each of the ones that are on top of the emperor stick to see which ones are on top of that those sticks, and recursively solve the game with minimal stick movement that way. Of course, in a real life, if you pick up the sticks, you probably mess up the pile, and that should be against the rules, right? But what you're going to be able to do is uh, come up with a, basically a dependency tree. Uh, dependency tree could be you know drawn about like this. You have a picture where A is dependent upon B and C. B is dependent upon D and E, C is dependent upon F, and D and E are both dependent upon G. So you can see you know, what dependencies are. And by the way, this is a fine way to draw dependencies uh, for your sprints or for, your, uh, for uh, features or whatever. Sometimes I see people connecting uh, stickies with yarn, and that can get a little bit messy when you try to move the stickies around or whatever. This is okay to draw, to draw this picture and put it on the wall alongside of your story map or whatever else you have. Okay, so you come up with a dependency tree. Just to note multiplicity, right? A node can have multiple children and multiple parents. All right, multiplicity. Hopefully it's not circular. So there are two basic steps, analyze and then implement. And the analysis part is going outside in. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is create a dependency map as we go along. So we're going to look at what our goal is. We're going to start at the very top level. We're going to do an implementation that's very, very naive, um, not doing a lot of deep analysis. We're just trying to do something simple here. And um, we're going to be dig going f lower and lower with each step. But we're going to do some naive implementation and see what pops up as dependencies. What, do, what does that outward goal need? And it turns out it needs B and C. Okay, so we did some coding for the goal, but we did it very naively, so we're going to throw it away. Don't save it. This is the same as prototypes, right? Just throw it away. It's not meant to be saved. It wasn't written as quality code. Don't give anybody, particularly your manager, the idea that you've already written the code. Okay, so, you know, then you go to the next level. B has, uh, you write some naive code, simple, not a lot of analysis, and you find that B is dependent upon D and E. C is dependent upon F as you keep iterating through this, and you look at D, and you find that D is dependent upon G, and lo and behold, E is also dependent upon G. So you come up with your diagram, and you threw away the code at each step. You did not save it. I stressed that enough, haven't I? Okay, so then a second step might be that you'd have some implementation, right? So when you're implementing, you can implement outside, out, inside out. So you start with the leaves, you start at the bottom, so G is down at the bottom, and you can implement this using TDD because you don't have, uh, you don't have further dependencies below it. You're gonna have you know, fewer mock objects, minimal dependency injection. You probably have to create some data objects of some sort, but still it's, it's less complicated when you're working from inside out. So you work on G, then you work on F, and then if you want to move up to E, working on uh, the E, then the dependency G has already been satisfied. So when you do the code for G, you're doing the final code. You're doing the real thing. You're checking the code in. And, you know, you could ship it just with J because it's working code and you've got test cases for it and so on. And the same with E. As you're pro progressing up this uh, dependency tray, um, you're checking the code in. You're doing a fine, fine job of it. You're writing all of the test cases. And it's a shippable piece of code. Okay, so 
when you're going top down, outside in, you're throwing away the code at each step. When you're going inside out, you're writing the real thing, but it's easier to do because you know what the dependency map looks like and you don't have dependencies underneath you that are not satisfied, so you don't have as many mock objects or uh, you don't have as much dependency injection. Okay, so I did a flowchart of this first. I don't like the flowchart explanation as much as I like the outside in, inside out explanation, but there you go. And I started, I think the first, no, this is the second thing I did. I tried a text explanation. There's a text explanation again. I don't prefer that one. So why would you use this, this, uh, this technique, right? Again, agile spikes uh, come to mind. Why do you spike? I mean, and this, I think, is from the scaled agile framework. Why do you spike? You want to estimate a new feature. You want to analyze uh, for how to break something up into smaller features or maybe you need to do feasibility analysis to determine the viability of a certain feature. Does it make sense? Is it really hard? Um, is it is it gonna break a lot of stuff? Whatever. If you wanna reduce the risk and uncertainty. Um, or conducting basic research. So I don't know about that last one, but for the, for the first four, Mikado could be a good technique, a good way to go. So for spikes, it can be good. Um, it's good for getting past complicated problems. The outside-in analysis all by itself is great for understanding the scope and doing planning and story splitting. It produces that nice visual map. Um, you get better estimates because you know where all the dependencies are and you know about how the code is going to lay out. Um, you know whether it's going to be feasible or not and you have more certainty, less risk involved in implement, implementing this. And by the way, when you're doing refactoring, you should probably refactor this way to understand what all the dependencies are, to understand exactly what you need to refactor depending upon your goal. Instead of going through and uh, just refactoring anything that you see that looks ugly or anything you see on the, on the way down from the top and then spreading out and including the entire world. So the inside out development is, is really good because um, with TDD you have, have less dependency injection and, and you understand the scope much better. So you're going about it more methodical way and you can incrementally uh, be shipping code as you're, as you're uh, completing it because it's fully tested, fully developed or whatever. So now let's talk about who and when. Probably these are developers who are doing it, but when is, is a little bit interesting. I think it, it comes up around backlog refinement time. When you're looking at, um, at different features you're going to implement and you're breaking things into smaller stories that are, that are more appropriate sizes for sprints, maybe you get into how to split it, or maybe you don't know how to estimate it, or maybe you're concerned about the risk of, of doing this, and, um, and so on. All of those questions seem to come up around backlog refinement time. And you could implement it in a spike. And to be honest with you, I'm just not that wild about spikes. I think the, uh, using spikes too often is going to slow you up. Um, it postpones your implementation. If you have two-week sprints, it's going to postpone your implementation by two weeks because you're going to do a spike in one sprint and then implement it in the next sprint. If you could do the research in the current sprint, then you would save two weeks and get this thing uh, done sooner. So, you know, my preference is maybe you get a couple of people together, do a little pair programming and get through this, uh, do, do a little Mikado and get through it in an hour, maybe two hours and uh, understand where the dependencies are and, and so on. So you can do it and get back to the, the backlog refinement, uh, complete the sizing in time for, uh, for the upcoming sprints and save some schedule time that way. That's just my preference. I'm just, you know, um, use spikes uh, as, you, as you want to, but I'm, I'm just a little reluctant to use, overuse spikes, I should say. Okay, so that's the Mikado method. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think it can be helpful. Um, be feel free to uh, give me comments, send me email, or tell me what you think. Um, there is a book about this. Um, there's a copy of the book on this page. Feel free to, to, to contact me if you want help with any of the stuff that I talk about in any of my videos. I'm Jim Brisson at agilecoaching.org. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye.